Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video I'm going to attempt to clear up some misconceptions about weight training for track and field and how you can actually get the most from it. In what follows I'm going to try to explain the types of exercises you should do in the gym, what load you should put on the bar and why it's important to target your fast twitch muscle fibre, how to put your weight training schedules into your overall training plan and crucially how best to maximise the transference of the strength you gain in the weights room into your actual event performance. Weight training alone won't make you a better athlete, a better sprinter or a better jumper. Otherwise, a weightlifter, for example, will be able to out-sprint a sprinter due to the volume of training that they do. To get the most out of your athletic training in the gym, you need to target your fast twitch muscle fibres. Now, subject to some debate, there are basically two types of these fibres. There are transitional type 2A and the out and out power producing type 2B fibres. And it's those latter ones, the type 2B, the turbochargers if you like, that are the ones that you really need to target. Fast twitch muscle fibres are recruited according to what's known as the size principle. Basically, the smaller bundles of fibre and the motor units that switch them on are recruited with less neural energy. That's the energy that you supply via your brain switching them on. To recruit the biggest, greatest power producing bundles of fast twitch muscle fibre and their motor units, you need to supply a constant and very direct, powerful amount of neural energy. Therefore you need to be in the zone and you need to be focused on the lift and you need to have intent, intent to lift that weight, that weight quickly and powerfully. By regularly training this way in the gym, i.e. in a way to recruit your fast twitch muscle fibres and the biggest bundles of them, you'll be able to, over time, learn how to apply force more rapidly, generate more power. And this is the key, the transference of that ability into your actual event performance. There are a number of ways and thoughts, theories and periodization models, periodization being training planning, as to just how best to transfer the strength you're going in the weights room into actual event performance. When I was an athlete, it was all about base building. So you'd go heavy in the gym over time, well, you start off with lighter weights, progressing up to heavier weights as the season progressed, and then turn that power and that strength that you developed hopefully via a period of more specific training to improve performance as the season approached. Much has now changed and more thinking is going towards what's called mixed load training or undulating periodization, whereby all aspects of an event's performance are trained at the same time. Therefore you might do speed training, plyometric power training and high level fast twitch motor fiber recruitment weight training all in the same training block. The rationale for this is to speed up and potentially more unify the transference ability of one mechanism of training into another. This way you're also unlikely to get a mismatch between one type of strength quality, i.e. let's say maximal strength capacity in the gym and speed. If you train too regularly and without including speed work or transference exercises in your general training around your weight training then you run the risk of becoming good at weight training and not improving as an athlete and this is where this mixed method of training probably has an advantage over a base building approach. So what exercises should you be doing in the weights room in order to improve your sprint and jump performance? Well the key, going back to what I've said, is rate of force production and to recruit those big fast twitch motor units and to do that you need to lift a heavy weight. So you should select multi-joint exercises such as squats and cleans for example. However, as you are lifting a very heavy weight you need to be very proficient in those exercises and have good technique. There are, of course, other exercises that you could employ, such as variations on single leg step-ups over one or two platforms, and I'll talk more about these another time.
You need to plan your weight training and you need to know that your central nervous system will only be able to apply maximal force for a shortish period of time. Therefore, when you go into the gym, you want to make the first exercises that you perform the heavy load, rapid force development ones. That's not to say you only do two exercises in a weight training session. You can do others, but those are more peripheral. So these ones or those ones could be used to develop your core, um, stability, proprioception, etc., and um, develop greater robustness, injury resilience. Another crucial factor when it comes to weight training is power to weight ratio. You can spend a lot of time in the gym increasing your strength and building up increased muscle size. With that muscle size will come additional weight. Therefore, it's actually conceivable that you, despite increases in strength, power, shall we say, that your actual ability to express that decreases. Different types of repetitions and sets or different combinations of repetitions and sets and loads on the bar produce different hormonal effects. Low repetition, heavy weight, weight training has less of a hormonal effect than high rep, medium weight, weight training for example. Thus, 4 times 4 at 90% of one repetition maximum will have less of a positive androgen hormone response and these hormones stimulate muscle growth. Multiple rep weight training secretes those hormones in copious amounts and depending on your body type, not so much body type but your internal body chemistry because we all don't respond to weight training or any training stimulus exactly the same, you may gain more muscle and you need to be aware of that. Over time you will learn if you are a big gainer when it comes to increasing muscle size or a low gainer. Hopefully this overview of weight training to improve specific athletic event performance will have been of use and you'll have picked up a few pointers and tips. Over a few more videos I'll hope to expand on some of these areas that I've covered and provide more information. Do let me know what you think and of course subscribe to the channel or even give it a dislike if you don't like what I'm saying and if you do dislike it please tell me why and I'll try to answer the question. It's all about spreading knowledge. I have a my opinions and I've learned a lot over the years from my research and my writing and my coaching and I'm just trying to put some views across and reflect some of the questions that I've been asked by athletes and coaches along my journey as a coach.